Hey, what's going on, Creality K1 owners? It's Covenant and Custom. Today, I'm going to be performing another modification on my K1. I'm going to be swapping out the factory feet with Derek Daryl's wide stance V2s. The footprint on the factory setup is about 13 and a half inches. This will increase with this modification, so make sure you got the real estate. This is going to require a test fit. They range from 2.5 to 2.9. It will be entirely dependent on your machine. I found that 2.5 works best for me. So I went ahead and printed out the correlating feet. This is going to be the clamping version, which requires a heated insert up top. Along with the feet, we're also going to need Henlore's MCU fan mount, as the bottom panel will be removed from the machine and not be reinstalled. We're going to need four M3x40 button head screws, four M3x10 button head screws, four M3x half millimeter washers, and eight M3 by four by five heated inserts if you're using the clamping version. Otherwise, you'll just need four. Let's move these out of the way, pull our soldering iron into the picture, and we will start the process of getting the heated inserts installed. The first for the clamping version only will be up top, and the second will be on the bottom of the foot where the factory foot pad will go. Next, you'll want to grab your soldering iron and heat it up to the necessary temperature and on the filament that you use to create these feet. I'm using ABS, so I went ahead and chose 200 degrees Celsius. The clamping version, I'll install the heated insert on the top of the foot. Once we've got that nice and flush with the top surface, we'll go ahead and flip this around so that we can attack the foot pad position, installing yet another heated insert. Regardless of which option you go with, you're just going to get the necessary amount of heated inserts in and then continue the process for the remaining three. Let's do something cool. Whoops. We're going to start this process by heating up the hot end to the appropriate temp to remove your filament. Remove the lid. Remove the PTFE from the extruder. Unlock the extruder gear. Press some filament through and pull it out. Since I just finished up a spool, only at a short length, so I pulled it out from the print head side, but if you got a lot of material left, I would just pull it out from the source. Take the clip out of the bottom of the runout sensor and remove the PTFE. You're going to want to power down your machine and then remove the power source. You're going to remove the bottom panel as well as the four feet. There are two M3 screws on the panel itself, and you'll use a two millimeter Allen to remove each of those and this will be the location for each. Next we're going to grab a 2.5 millimeter Allen as that will be the required size for the hardware on all four corners. These screws are what secure the feet in place. Let's go ahead and take these off real quick because one we're not going to need this panel once we do this modification and two can't do this modification unless we remove the panel. Please keep in mind that while you're removing this hardware, it is securing the bottom panel in place. So when you get to the last foot, maintain the panel so it doesn't fall and take out a toe. And then we're going to go ahead and disconnect the fan from the MCU. At this point, you will be testing the fit of the tools from 2.5 to 2.9 to see what the best fit is for your frame as this does vary from the factory or from machine to machine. 2.5 seemed to be a good fit for mine, which was nice and snug. And I will check it on the adjacent corner to make sure that it has the same fitment. And take a look at that, it's secured in place. We're gonna use a 2.5 millimeter Allen to remove the fan from the bottom panel and it will be each of those four screws. After we've got them all loose, we'll go ahead and wiggle that fan free. You are going to need three of these four screws to secure the fan mount back to the MCU. With the position of the fan sticker side up, we're going to take that same orientation, placing the fan in the mount, making sure not to pinch the wire between the mount and the fan.
Once the fan is securely in place, you're ready to move on to the installation process. You are going to need a 2mm Allen in order to remove the M3 button head screws that are on the MCU. The three locations on the board are going to be the positions that you installed the fan mount to. With those three button head screws removed, you're ready to get the fan mount in place. Reconnect the connector to the appropriate port. On the K1, it will be the top of the two that are open. Utilize the three mounting points, which is top right, top left, and bottom left, by putting hardware into the fan mount and securing it in place. The bottom right will not have a screw, but that is not an issue. These three will be able to maintain the mount. For all hardware on a 3D printer, I like to use the three finger method. If you meet resistance with three fingers, you're probably good. Now we're gonna make sure that the mating surface on the frame is ready to receive our three feet. The one obstruction that I will have and you should experience on the K1 or K1C is the ground screw for the USB, which is securing the ground cable. With a 2.5 millimeter Allen, we'll go ahead to remove that because this will be hanging loose, we're going to secure the cable up and out of the way. I've used a zip tie and secured it to the correlating USB port cable. Pressing the fourth and final foot into its position, we're ready to secure these all in place. For that, we're gonna be using our two millimeter Allen and four M3 by 40 butt head screws location for each of these m3 by 40 button head screws will be in line with the frame as just shown now grab your four m3 by 10 button head screws and four m3 by half millimeter spacers i'm going to go ahead and take the foot pad out of the boot or just utilize the foot pad if you didn't have them installed and placing the triangulated portion from the top of the foot pad into the inset position on the wide stance v2 feet Place a washer with the M3x10 through, as you'll provide a clamping force without the screw damaging the foot pad itself. With that complete, we'll move on to addressing the remaining three corners. After you finish installing the last foot pad, you've successfully completed the Derek Darrell Wide Stance V2 feet assembly and install. Let's get this printer right side up. We're gonna go ahead and reverse the process to get this machine back up and running. Starting with the power source, we're going to install it in the appropriate port on the rear panel and turn the machine on so that we're ready to heat up the hot end. Take the PTFE and guide it into the bottom of the runout sensor, securing it in place with the appropriate clip. Grab your lid and place it back over top. Make sure to feed whatever flavor of filament you choose to melt at this time. It's about 18 and three quarter inches from side to side, front to back, with the new setup, including the rubber boots. So make sure you've got that area available. Without the rubber boots, you're gonna be looking at closer to 18 and a quarter inches. Make sure to tune in for future updates and upgrades for the Creality K1, and soon, the K1 Max. Thanks for watching, see you next time.